We talked about friction on Thursday, and we said that friction was a resistive force, a force that resists motion. We defined two kinds of friction. There was static friction. There's that word static again. Static friction, which is the force that keeps an object from beginning to move. In other words, it's the force of friction that acts on an object that is already at rest. And then there's kinetic friction, which we also call uh, dynamic friction, and which I also called, both of those words are like actual terms that describe this, but I also call it myself sliding friction because it helps us to distinguish what's going on here sometimes. Kinetic or dynamic or sliding friction is the friction that resists the motion of an already moving object. So the force that keeps an object from beginning to move and the force that um, tries to stop an object that is already moving. Now, which force of friction is bigger? Okay, let, me give you a, let me tell you something here. I'll preface this by saying um, the question that I'm asking you right now, which force of friction is bigger, is a little bit of a trick question. Okay, so there's more to it than just this one or this one. Yep. The maximum static friction will always be bigger than the kinetic. Good. Static friction is not always bigger than kinetic friction. But the maximum possible force of static friction is bigger than friction, is that than kinetic friction. Does that make sense? So if we go back to what we were doing on Thursday with Jacob's desk, okay, this time I'll use this desk so I don't have to keep pushing Jacob. Okay, this desk right here beside Rachel, this empty desk right here, let's say this time has a maximum force of static friction of 50 newtons. So that means that, that, means that um, static friction is not necessarily 50 on it. In fact, right now, what's the force of static friction on that desk? Nothing. The force of static friction is only as big as it needs to be. Remember, that's the stubborn force. The stubborn force, the pain in the butt force, the force that just keeps doing whatever I'm doing until it gives up, until it just gets tired of doing what I'm doing and gives up. So right now, I'm not pushing on this desk. Static friction doesn't push. But if I push on this desk, remember, I'm going to write this down so we don't forget the numbers here. If I push on this desk, with a force of 20 newtons, does this desk move? Ladies? If I push on this desk, Parker, with a force of 20 newtons, does it move? No. Because the maximum force is static, and I'm only, sorry, is 50, and I'm only applying 20. What is the force of static friction when I push on it with 20? 20. Let's say I push on it with 30, does it move? Nope. So what is the force of static friction in that case? 30. If I push on it with 49, does it move? What's the force of static friction? 49. I push on it with 50.1. Let's just say 50. Does it move? You know what, let's say, yeah, okay, I'll push on it with 51, let's say then. Okay, I push on it with 51, does it move? Yes. Yes, it does. Okay, if I push on it with 51, it does move. Now, what do we know about static friction? Zero. I beat it. Right? It was a pain in the butt. It kept pushing as hard as I pushed. As hard as I pushed until I pushed with just slightly bigger than 50, and then it gave up and said, I can't do this anymore. And you win. And now the force of static friction is zero. It backs off. Now what do we got? Well, now it would be kinetic friction, right? Once it's moving, it's kinetic friction. And we know that kinetic friction, in that case, might be... We don't know exactly what it is, but maybe it's 40 newtons. Static friction was 20. It was 30. It was 40. It was 45. Static friction isn't always bigger than kinetic friction, but the maximum static friction of 50 is bigger than kinetic friction. Does that make sense? All right. We uh, learned an equation on Thursday that described for us not the force of static friction, but the maximum force of static friction. We learned that it was mu, that Greek letter mu, which is kind of written like a U and an M combined, mu times the normal force. This value mu is called the coefficient 
of friction. And it's basically just a measure of how much the two materials stick together. Okay, which would have a higher coefficient of friction? Rubber and ice or rubber and pavement? Rubber and pavement, because they stick together better than rubber and ice. Right, Parker? This number is usually somewhere between 0 and, well, 0 and 2, let's say. Okay, it's a small number. Okay, it's, you're not going to get a number that's like 58. You know, 0 0.5, 1.2, something like that. But it's never going to be, uh, you know, 25 or, or anything like this. And it doesn't have any units associated with it. It's just, it's just a number. Okay, it's just a number. Now, we did a couple questions on, on Thursday. Uh, that basically uh, were phrased something like this. A force of 25 newtons is required to get an object starting to move. What were we given there? A force of 25 newtons is the force that's required to get an object moving. That would be? Static friction. That would be the maximum static friction, right? This is the force, right? As I'm pushing with 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50 newtons gets it to move. Okay, begins, it begins to move at 50 newtons. Okay, that was the maximum force of static friction. Then we sub our numbers in and solve. Hey, what's uh, Fn for us usually? The normal force, the force of the ground pushing up. What is it always for us, at least right now? Not 9.81, but close. Yeah, and we're going to make a positive here because it's absolute values. 9.81, yeah, you're partly right. Mass times, mass times 9.81. Okay. So, George, if you have an object that's really, really light, then there's going to be less friction than an object that's really, really heavy, right? Mm -hmm. And that's because we have to multiply it by mu times the mass times 9.81. All right. Okay, we had a couple questions for homework uh, over the weekend, and it was, the questions we had for homework were the practice problems on page uh, 187. There was only two of them. Let's take a peek at those two practice questions here now. Sorry, 180, 185 it was, wasn't it? 185. Let's go over both of these questions. Uh, number one says, an applied force of 24 newtons forward causes a steel block to start moving across a horizontal greased surface. What's the mass of the block? What, what are we given here? 24 newtons is what? Force of what? That's the max force of static friction. That's the force that, like if I push with 22, does it move? 23, does it move? Okay, so 24 is a force that, be, that is required to get it moving. That's the maximum force of static friction. So let's write that down. FSF max is 24 newtons. We know the coefficient of static friction here, since we're dealing with static friction, between a greased steel surface and a steel block. Where is that? Greased steel. Here we are. Steel and greased steel for static friction is 0 0.15. We're looking for the mass. We're going to say FSF max is equal to mu times the normal force. And the normal force, as we go on this unit, the normal force will change in value. But for now, it'll always be m times g. So let's sub that in right now. FSF max is equal to mu times mg. And now we solve for m. You guys can do this, right? m is equal to what? How do you take the mu and the g over? Dividing. So FSF max divided by mu times g. We get a value of 24 divided by 0 0.15 times 9.81. Let's try this on the calculator here. We're going to say 24 divided by, you know what, we should do the bottom first here. 0.15 times 9.81. And now let's say 24 divided by that. 
We should get the answer that's in the book there, 16 kilograms. I went two digits, two digits because this is two digits, and the coefficient of friction is two digits. Isn't that three? 0 0.15? Numbers at the end, like this is, this is two down here, because numbers, zeros at the end count, but zeros at the start don't count. So two digits, two digits, final answer should be two digits. That's important now, right? Because that counts for us now. All right, second question says, suppose the sled in example 3.17 is resting on a horizontal wet snowy surface. Would the sled move if we applied a force of 125 newtons? Would it? I don't know. OK, let's figure it out. What was the mass of the sled? 78 kilograms? 78? OK. Um, uh, what do we got here? Wa it was wax tickery on wet snow. Coefficient of friction is 0 0.20. Let's find FSF max. Are they telling me that 125 is the maximum force of static friction? No. It says, look, this is what we apply. They're not saying, oh, this is where it starts moving. They're saying, does it move? So let's figure out FSF max. It's so equal to mu times the normal force, which is, for us, right now at least, mu times mg. We multiply those numbers together. And when we do that, we should get, what, um, 78 times 0.2 is 156 or something like that? 153? We'll, we'll say 153 when we multiply those together. Going to move? If we apply a force of 125 and the max force of static friction is 153, does it move? No. If we apply a force of 155, does it move? Yes. Because if I apply a force of 155, it exceeds the maximum force. All right? Good? All right. I'm going to give you another equation now. I'm going to write down kind of off in the corner this maximum force of static friction equation that we learned on Thursday. Now I'm going to give you another one. It's going to look remarkably like this one. This one says FKF, the force of kinetic friction, is equal to mu times the normal force. So if we're talking about an object that's at rest, or we're talking about the force required to just get it moving, we're using the first equation. But if we're talking about an object that is moving, then we're going to use this one. Really, the only difference here is that the second equation doesn't give us a maximum value. It gives us the value. And the coefficient of static friction will be different than the coefficient of kinetic friction. Which one's bigger? Static or kinetic? Static. If you look back at that table, right, you can see that going down the list here, the coefficient of static friction is bigger than the coefficient of kinetic friction. So now, we're going to see some questions in a moment where you have to decide, is this static or is this kinetic? Decide. And then you use the appropriate equation to find what you're looking for. By the way, Fn will still be what? Georgia, Fn will still be what? Okay, go ahead. Fn will still be not 9.81. Sorry? Yes, thank you for thinking about that in your head. What does it mean, mg? What does, what does m mean? Patrick. Okay, you good? Okay. 
Um, so it is mass times mass times 9.81. We just make that a positive value. Okay, let's take a look at this equa this uh, example here on 187. This one says a 1640 kilogram lift truck with rubber tires is skidding on wet concrete with all four wheels locked. Calculate the acceleration of the truck. It's skidding. It's sliding. Remember we said kinetic friction, dynamic friction, or sliding friction? This is kinetic friction, right? What do we have here? We have a mass here of 1640 kilograms. We have a coefficient of kinetic friction between rubber and wet concrete. Rubber and wet concrete. Kinetic friction is 0 0.5. We want to know the acceleration. Hmm, interesting. Interesting. Got a suggestion for me? What do you want to start with? Did you find the Okay, okay. FKF max? No, not FKF max. Remember, the force of kinetic friction is oh. the force of kinetic friction. Okay? If it's, it doesn't matter how hard you push or how hard something pushes, as long as it's moving, kinetic friction is the same value. So we're, we're done with the maximum now. FKF is equal to mu times the normal force. Let's get that. Yeah, let's get that. That's equal to 0 0.5 times 1640 times 9.81. And when I multiply those numbers together, I get... What do I get here? 0. 0.5 times 1640 times 9.81 gives me 8,044.2. Okay, that's not what I'm looking for. It was that a waste of time? What are we going to do with that if it's not a waste of time? Rachel, what do you say? What other equation? Okay, you know what? That's okay. So we've got F is equal to mu times Fn. That is a valid equation. It did not get me the answer I was looking for. But is it wrong? Absolutely not. It's absolutely correct. Okay, so now I've got to pick another valid equation, another group B equation here. Okay, Rachel said, Rachel S. said, put in another equation. Okay, so look for your group B equations because it involves acceleration. And let's pick one. Which one do you want to pick? Uh, yeah, F is equal to M times A, or A is equal to F over M. My force here is 8044.2 newtons, and my mass here is 1640. I think when we do that, I think we end up getting 4.9? 4.9 meters per second squared. Now, I would mark this completely right. Technically, though, watch this. Technically, when I solve for FKF, I got the magnitude of it. When I sub it into A is equal to F over M, I need the magnitude and direction. If I'm moving to the right, which way does friction act? To the what? To the left. So technically, that should be negative, right? We're always going to get a positive number up here, always, because we solve for the magnitude. But when I sub it into the here by, by rights, I should put the direction in there as well, which is a negative, which means we get negative 4.9. Like I said, if this is a quiz and you put positive 4.9, I would have marked that right. But it should be negative. Okay, let's have a look at these two questions, please, on page 187. Actually. All right, number one, if a force of 450 is required to keep it moving at a constant speed, we know from our review today, we also know from what we learned last week, if something's moving at a constant speed, the net force is what? If it's moving at a constant speed, the net force is what? An object in motion will stay in motion at a constant speed as long as the net force is zero until acted upon by an unbalanced force. So look, if this thing... This 1,000 kilogram thing is being pulled this way 
we'll call it an applied force of 450 newtons. But the net force is zero, then friction must be pulling this way with a force of 450. Right? If friction was 420, the net force would be 30 newtons to the right. If friction was 470, then the, first, the net force would be 20 newtons to the left. So if you're pulling it at a constant speed, however hard you're pulling must be equal and opposite to the force of kinetic friction. So we've got kinetic friction force now in question number one. And now that you have that, I'll leave it for a couple more minutes to see if you can actually solve this question now, okay? You know kinetic friction is the same as how hard you're pulling, if you're pulling it at a constant speed. Okay, let's get at it. All right, let's finish this off now. Um, listen, if the first force of friction is 450, and the mass is 1,000, we know the force of kinetic friction is mu times the normal force, but... But, Demi, what's the normal force for us? Sorry? What's, th what's the normal force always going to be equal to us, at least for now? I'm sorry? Yeah. We know that Fn is equal to m times g, so we're going to say Fkf is equal to mu times m times g. And therefore, mu, if we're solving for mu, it's equal to the force of kinetic friction, FKF, over M times G. Listen, we got all this stuff here. Sum in your numbers and do your thing here. FKF is 450. Even though we're given kinetic friction, sorry, we're given the applied force, how hard you're pulling, if it's going at a constant speed, that's got to be the same as friction, as kinetic friction. So it's 450 divided by the mass of 1,000 kilograms times 9.81. Okay, let's do this on the calculator here. Um, you could, you could calculate the number on the bottom first, but you could also say 450 divided by bracket 1,000 times 9.81. End the bracket. It gives you 0 0.0459. Now, that should be three digits. And it is three digits, right? Those, those zeros out in front don't count. Why should it be three digits here? Look at our data. 1,000 kilograms is how many? Four. 450 newtons is? Three. 9.81 is? Three. Four, three, three, final answer should be? If we had four, three, two, the final answer should be? Two. The least precise piece of data is where we round it to. Right? I'm going to give you a worksheet right now. There's seven questions on that worksheet. Five of them are calculation, and two of them are more qualitative where you're just going to think about a little bit. Okay, I want you to focus initially on the first three questions. Okay, then I want you to, okay, once you really feel comfortable with one to three, then I want you to take a look at questions four and five because they are a little bit tougher. Okay, but these are mixed up. It's not just, okay, here's static friction and then here's kinetic friction. These are mixed up. So you've got to identify what's going on. Is this static or kinetic friction? And then use the appropriate equation. Remember, if it's static, then you can cal calculate the maximum static, but that's not necessarily the actual value of static. If you're using kinetic, then what you calculate is the actual value of kinetic friction. So I'll ask you to take one of these, hand the pile on to the next person, work on questions one to three until you feel real comfortable with them, and then try questions four and five, and then after that you can do six and seven. Okay, let's have a look at question number one up here now on that worksheet. It says a 25 kilogram block is initially at rest on a horizontal surface. This force, 75 newtons, is required to get it in motion, to set the block in motion. And then 60 newtons is required to keep it in motion at a constant speed once it's moving. So initially, it's not moving, and 75 newtons is required to get it moving. That's FSF max. So let's write that down as S F S. FS, it's hard to say that. FSF max is 75 newtons. And then once I exceed that, let's say I apply 80 newtons, it starts moving, and now it's kinetic friction, and kinetic friction would be 60 newtons. We know that because, well, if it's moving at a constant speed, the net force has to be zero, 
And if the net force is zero, then the force that I pull with is equal and opposite to the friction pulling it back. Now, we also have the mass of this thing is 25 kilograms, and that's going to be the case whether we're talking about static or kinetic friction. Let's first find the coefficient of static friction by using the first equation that we learned. FSF max is equal to mu times the normal force. What is, what is Georgia, what's the, what's the normal force equal to? Yeah, I do, yeah. Um, the normal force is m times g, so we're going to say, what, fsf max is equal to mu times m times g. m is fsf max over mu times g. Sorry, I'm solving for mu, I guess. Take the m and the g down by dividing, and this is what I get. So it's 75 divided by, 75 divided by... Uh, what, 25 times 9.81 gives me a value of mu, which is 0 0.31, 0 0.31 for static friction. Now, would you expect, would you expect the coefficient of kinetic friction to be bigger or smaller than this once we calculate that? Smaller. So let's, let's calculate kinetic friction now and see what happens. FKF is equal to mu times, we know the normal force is m times g, the normal force is m times g, so we rearrange that, FKF divided by m times g. This is 60 divided by 25 times 9.81, and this time I end up getting 0 0.24. Does that seem like a reasonable value for it? Yes, it's lower then my force, my coefficient of static friction. It seems reasonable. Yeah, question? Okay, so question, um, look up here, guys, please. The question is, uh, should we write that as 2.4 times 10 to the negative 1? Doesn't matter. Okay, 2.4 times 10 to the minus 1 is two digits, and it's in scientific notation, and it's correct. 0 0.24 is also two digits in standard notation, and it's correct. The only reason that you'll ever have to use scientific notation is, let's say you got a, a number that's like this, 2048, and it needs to be three digits. The only way you can make that three digits is to go 2.05 times 10 to the 3. So that would have to be in scientific notation, but if you can put it in the right number of digits without scientific notation, doesn't matter. Okay. Okay, how many people are done number two? Okay. Um, number three is a tricky one. I'm not going to do number three for you here right now, but I am going to give you a little bit of a hint for this one. It says... A 100 kilogram object moves at 20 meters per second, comes to a stop over a distance of 40. Uh, what's the coefficient of dynamic, or remember dynamic means kinetic, right? This one says it's, it's coming to a stop over 40 meters. What's the coefficient of kinetic or dynamic, whatever you want to call it, friction? Listen, there's one force acting here. It's friction. We would like to say FKF is equal to mu times the normal force. Is that a valid equation? Yes. We're going to end up using that, but I don't know what this force of kinetic friction is. How might I find the force of kinetic friction? I don't know what mu is. So I got two unknowns here, right? Get the force some other way. Get the force another way. There's only, it's not static friction, there's only one other equation that you have for force. Use it. Use the other equation you have for force to get the force of static, of kinetic friction here, okay? And then sub it in there and then solve for this one which is your unknown. Alright? I want you to have 
questions two and three done tonight. If you have trouble with them, come and see me tomorrow scheduled help, and I'll give you, a, I'll give you some help on two and three, all right?